Not only did the man before you in the dock indulge in the most shameful orgies on the following day after his mother's death, he killed the man cold-bloodedly in pursuance of some sordid vendetta in the underworld of prostitutes and pimps. That, gentlemen of the jury, is the type of man the prisoner is. Then all day there was my appeal to think about. I made the most of this idea, studying the effect so that to squeeze out the maximum of consolation. Thus, I always began by assuming the worst. My appeal was dismissed. That meant, of course, I was to die sooner than the others, obviously, but I reminded myself, it's common, it's common knowledge that life isn't worth living anyhow, and on a wide view, I could see that it makes little difference whether one dies at the age of 30 or 3 score and 10. Since in either case, other men and women will continue living, the world will go on as before. My thoughts had reached this point when the chaplain walked in unannounced. He remained quite still at first, his arms resting on his knees, his eyes fixed on his hands, 
They were slender but sinewy hands, which made me think of two nimble little animals. Then he gently rubbed them together. He stayed so long in the same position that for a while I almost forgot he was there. All of a sudden, he jerked his head up and looked me in the eyes. Why? he asked. Don't you let me come to see you? I explained that I didn't believe in God. The chaplain gazed at me with this sort of sadness. Then I don't know how it was, but something seemed to break inside me. And I started yelling at the top of my voice. I hurled insults at him. I took him not to waste his rotten prayers on me. It was better to burn than to disappear. I had been shouting so much that I lost my breath. 